bishops of the Middle East, we were afraid. What would happen for two weeks, uh, especially that we came from different cultures, subcultures, different churches, liturgies, traditions, languages. It was in some way a Babel. Babel or Babel, you say? Tower of Babel. 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 Those who came from Iraq, from Iran, Arabi, say, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Egypt, Cyprus, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Emirates. A lot. Maybe 16 countries. Uh, the Christians represented were 16 million, but the Catholic are 5 million only, living among 330 million of non-Christians, Muslims and Jews. So as you understand, we had our own fears, divisions. You can't expect that all the bishops coming from many countries have the same idea. Sure. Yeah. We know that two twins don't think the same way, twins. How much one people come from different areas. Uh, the first day, it was Sunday, 10th of October, we, we were at the Mass with the Holy Father at St. Peter. I remember this Mass because of the homily, which was extraordinary. Our Holy Father speaks well. I don't know if you read his homilies, but yes. he's someone who speaks well. Maybe he has no, uh, like John Paul, uh, doesn't make sure. He's not an actor, he's very shy. But when he speaks, he speaks one, two, three, clear. Understand? Yes. Huh? Generally, they used to say, let us go to see the Pope before John Paul. Here they say, let us hear the Pope. <laughs> he speaks well. <laughs> now, during the homily, he said this, uh, this paragraph, I remember it very well. He said, Pentecost is not a unique historical event which, which happened once upon a time. But it's a permanent dynamism which can be repeated. Uh, simple, no? So Pentecost is not only something which happened in the past and which is not repeated. He meant that the synod of the bishops of the Holy Land of the Middle East should be, should be a new Pentecost. It means the main protagonist of the synod are not the bishops, but the Holy Spirit. The situation becomes better. Because <laughs> there is one protagonist, not 180. Mm -hmm. With one head, it's already, we have headache with one head. Mm -hmm. If we had two heads, more headache. Okay, so the Holy Spirit really guided our meetings. I don't hide that the first days we were afraid, like the apostles, in the Seneca before the descent of the Holy Spirit. They were afraid, closed doors, etc. Through prayer every day, we used to pray together, meditation, uh, we used to speak, interfere, intervention from the different uh, fathers, and uh, there were discussions in circles according to different languages. What happened is that after two weeks, we produced one message, which was very strong and very clear, and I, feel, I, I, I felt that it was filled of hope, a message filled of hope. I encourage you to read it. If someone have read it, I am sure he enjoyed it. Thank you if you read it. Read it, 12 pages, you need one hour to read it. Uh, you can stop in, on some paragraphs, but it helps really to raise hope. Then, beside the message, there is there are 44 recommendations, practical recommendations. These came out from the Synodal Fathers, practical uh, things to do, you know. The message is what to think, but the recommendations are what to do. We need to think what to do also, otherwise, if the message only is a theoretical thinking, it will lead nowhere. So the 44 recommendations are very, very interesting. Okay? I know that they could be better, but we spent two weeks, not two months, and everything was 
that everything was done in two weeks, so it was rapid. Generally, the synods took three weeks. I believe three weeks is a good period. Two weeks, it was short to mature uh, the, mat the message and recommendations. Uh, also, I, uh, I um, invite you to read the recommendations. It, took less, it takes less than half hour to read them. And they are very, very practical upon, upon many, many subjects. Now, let me skip the form and speak about the content. What the message and the recommendations contain in terms of content. Message, content. We have, I can summarize them in five points quickly. Then, if you want to know more about one, you can ask. <coughs> First point is very spiritual and pastoral. The need to strengthen the faith of our Christians in the Middle East it should be a strong faith. So far, all the Christians of the, of the Middle East say we are Christian. No one hides his faith. We don't have, like in Europe or maybe in the States, what we call atheism. The word atheism, we don't know it here. All the population of the Middle East are believers, either Muslims or Druzes or Christians, okay, are believers. Uh, we don't have uh, agnosticism or atheism in the European meaning. Even when I want to translate the word agnosticism, I don't find an, a good Arabic word, I have to explain it. Because people generally say we are believers. No one says, oh, I don't know if God exists or not. No, it exists for everyone. Maybe he doesn't go to Mass on Sunday. Maybe a Muslim doesn't fast Ramadan, but he believes in his faith. So, but the main, the main thing is to strengthen the faith of the Christians, to make it based on the Word of God. And I believe that a Christian doesn't read the Word of God every day, even for 10 minutes. To read and meditate cannot be called really Christian, because we need strength, power. We need to have intimacy with the Lord. How can we be intimately related to the Lord, hear His voice, and make he, us, make Him hear our voice? If there is not this dialogue, continuous dialogue through prayer and reading of His Word, this is important. So we, in one of the recommendations, we ask our faithful to read the Word of God every day, but also to train them to this, because people will not do this if they are not trained, if they don't feel the necessity, okay, and the importance. This is the first important point, and this leads to conversion, personal and collective. This is, I consider, the base of the synod, the first starting point. Second point, to create more communion between different Catholic churches in the Middle East. You know that we have seven patriarchates in the Middle East. Do you know them? A test, a simple test. Some of them. There are seven patriarchates. Catholic. Can you help? Melkite, patriarchate, yes. Coptic. Syrian. Catholic. Armenian. Maronites. Greek Catholic, we said. Melkite are Greek Catholic. Chaldean in Iraq. And the last one? No. Where are you now? Latin. <laughs> 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 the patriarchate, you are there, right? Yeah. I forgive you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with emotion, someone can forgive. Yes. The emotion of being like, okay. But uh, maybe you, you meant the Oriental Patriarchate, there are six, not seven. The Latin Patriarchate is special, special. It's Latin right in the heat, so some people may mix things up to say Latin, it's not Oriental, or it is Oriental, it may be mixing up. But in the Synod, we have an intervention of one similar father who said, the Latin Church in the Middle East is Latin, 100%, it's Oriental, 100%. No one objected from the other Oriental churches, so it means it was accepted. <laughs> so these churches should work more closely together. Otherwise, everyone will
behave like a ghetto, surrounded with walls, its own liturgy, its own language, its own traditions, and it's not good. We have to, be, to have communication between each other, well together, in the social life, education life, sector, etc. It's important. And that Sin spoke a lot, uh, a lot about communion between bishops and priests, priests and lay people, between families. This is what is missing in the church, to have more communion. I feel between you there is communion. This is important. Okay? This is the reason we are, we are, why you came together. This communion is the best witness to Jesus when we are united together. The first church gave the best communion testimony when they put together even their, their money, their land. Their, it was a miracle how they detached themselves from their ownership and put together so there was no rich and poor, all were equal. This is the ideal where we should arrive if we want to practice communion. Believe me, Christianity is the solution to all the problems of the world. If we live our Christianity, if we live our Christianity, it is the best insurance company because if everyone puts in the same, let us say, his extra at least, there will be no poor in the community because everyone will have what he needs. What he needs. And will have no fear for the future if everyone thinks of his brothers and sisters. Third point, more ecumenical dialogue with non-Catholics, Orthodox and Evangelicals. And here it was a good paragraph written. And I, for, I remind you that in the Synod were invited representatives of non-Catholic churches to attend all the Synod without any reserve. They were allowed to attend the Synod. And some were present all the time. Some Orthodox, some Anglicans, some uh, historians. I expected more, but maybe it is not good to have many, many, just representatives. There was also the representative, the president of all the Federa Lutheran Federation. He was there. We had also, uh, I anticipate, a rabbi from Jerusalem who spoke, and two Muslims who spoke. One Shiite from Iran, an Ayatollah, and one Sunni from Lebanon. They spoke all very well. You can read their speeches on Vatican uh, website. It's easy. You put Vatican.va. It's easy. Vatican.va. You open, you have treasures, all the speeches of the Holy Father, of the Synod, about many things. Uh, so, there were present many representatives of non-Catholic churches. And there was an invitation to promote ecumenical dialogue. Even one of the recommendations we asked, the unification of the Feast of Easter. You know that we celebrate Easter twice, three years twice. It's not good. Three Christmases. It's not good. It's very bad. If Jesus is one, salvation is one, we should celebrate it once a year, not twice a year. And if we can't unify our calendar, how can we unify our faith? Because the calendar is easier to unify than faith, the dogmatic differences. So we asked the Holy Father, we have written a recommendation, to unify the Feast of Easter. I know it's not easy, it's not easy, especially that our Orthodox brothers are not willing to unify. They don't want to change the calendar. You know that we have two calendars in the church, which are they? Gregorian and, what is the second one? Followed by Orthodox? Julian, from Julius Caesar, huh? the old calendar is Julian. And how many days difference between both? 13. Days. And this is the reason Christmas, the two Christmases, Orthodox and Catholic.